These are very wet looking snow angel leaves that I just rescued from outside from my original snow angel that's starting to rot from too much rain. So I'm going to let them dry in here and I'm going to take you outside where all the mess are. The sun's about to pop out late in the afternoon, so it's probably now about 2 or 3 o'clock. This is where my poor snow angel, that one's a real, and that one is another snow angel that I haven't even reported. That one is um, maybe snow angel. <laughs> They're all snow angels. Hang on, let me see. Ah, that's Tromso. Anyway. Lowy hybrids. This is my Lowy hybrid section. Now, oh, look how beautiful that Mundas is. Almost looks like cream tea, isn't it? But anyway, I need to remove some or maybe most of them because even that Maxwell, they are suffering from too much rain and frost. So last week, it's today, it's Saturday. Last Saturday we had minus one and then Sunday we had minus two and then Tuesday or Monday Yeah, that was Sunday and then Monday. I think Yeah, that was Monday morning Because Sunday <laughs> I'm getting confused. So anyway, and then after that we had rain and then it the Sun came out on a Wednesday and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days now, it's been raining and drizzling. From 98 to 100% humidity we've been having. And these plants are not made for the rain. So especially now in winter, they're supposed to be dry. And doesn't matter how good your soil mix is, they will suffer from the rot when they rot. So what you got to do is this, remove the rot as much as possible. So I'm just going to move these other newly acquired plants that I bought recently. This is a Sedivaria Cross Compact Burro's Tail. And to show you, it's not really all that frost hardy because that got hit by the frost and also the rain. So now I'm securing this here. I actually forgot to put this away and look what happened. So now they have to thaw out in here. I'll keep them here where it doesn't get wet. So, but this is still out in the open. They will still feel the frost, but at least they won't be affected by the rain. Now, I'm removing all, see all that? Deady, <laughs> dead <laughs> leaves. So this is another tromso. I have to make sure I put a label. And anything, that's all gone. It's just black, so I don't even know if I'm seeing this on my, hang on, I'm going to block it. Okay, so remove that. And the bottom, anything that's sort of dark, might as well remove it because they ain't going to grow. They just continue to rot and affect the plant. So, and at least I'm hoping I actually successfully grew one tromso, I think, inside. So, I'm just going to put this here. I dropped the other one, which is also rotting. I dropped it again. Now, this might seem drastic, but this is the only way I could save them. And hopefully, this is all really soaked, cold, and miserable. <laughs> That's how I will describe my plans at the moment. So, now... All the stem, you can see that's all nice and red and healthy. And look, see the sun, we need you. Now anyway, anything that's sort of dark like that, the little bit of darkness, we remove. And we bring in some light now because that is sort of, uh, don't we take it now. We leave it. We'll give her some more meat. But anyway, so... But that's still another plant. If it's going to die, <laughs> might as well do the most damage. There you go. Ooh, that is going to grow into a beautiful baby. This is my Sedum Adolfi eye. Try as I might, it doesn't grow in the frost. They die here in camera so I had it out in the open because I've had this for a couple of years and I thought it's now frost hardy no it's not it lost all its stripes as well as 
it freezes so now I put it now here in a little bit more protected so there's no direct hit with the frost but if the frost sort of goes over because look sort of halfway so where you put your cycle lens is very important see blue skies now even the sedum clavatum I have a frost hardy sedum clavatum but this one is not frost hardy yet minus four that's all and look even this kalankoi look at that look when they do that look that's all from the frost but ah uh, see the water just burst that's not gonna grow I can't even save that I can't even get some leaves to propagate because that's all dead see, anything that sort of bends down like this then, oh, see, because I can feel it's soft. Normally that's hard. So if I squish that, oh, did I hit me? Yes, I did. <laughs> so anyway, I am so overgrowing plants that's not going to grow in my area. Even the snow white here, I should really bring this inside. So you can tell when you touch it, it's soft. That means it's got water. And that one, it's only new as well. So it doesn't matter. I'll leave you there. And this... That is still alive, but my teddy bear, I'm going to put this secure, actually, put there somewhere, look, in that area there. Mm. We're getting afternoon sun, so we can't expose it directly into sunlight or else it's going to burn as well. So this one doesn't have feet, so what I do, I put a little bit of marble and look, glass eyes. Okay, so... That way, that can get lifted up. This one has got space there or gaps, so that can breathe. Haworthia is actually frost hardy, but I've already put them here because I'm trying to grow them because they don't need to be grown in full sun because when they do, they go orange like that. But that one, I think, is just a variety of Haworthia that's already a hybrid that grows orangey, very nice. So see that Haworthia here that's exposed to the frost. So some parts of it got frost bitten and the rest of it is alive. So I just leave it there. I don't even worry about that one. And the Orbea, which I thought is already frost hardy, half of it is alive or Stapelia. I don't know what variety you are, but anyway. Oh, Huernia. Volcartii variety ripens. Yep, uh, or oh, ripens. Now, half of it is alive and half is dead because half is exposed to the frost and half is protected. Oh, this one, I forgot to put this away. The Ionium or Icroison Cross Isoides variegatum. It's now deadum. <laughs> <laughs> and so as this Ripsalis here, oh my goodness, I kept forgetting, oh my goodness. So that way, hang on, did I secure you? I can't even get it out. So it's terrible growing succulents, ah, oh, leave it there, in areas that got frost. So that is my dilemma. I'm trying to find out which plant is, uh, <laughs> this other one, is, this is Orbea subter. Ah, uh, never mind. It's dead. Anyway, but it's so pretty. Oh my goodness. But this one actually, I bought it as a $3 plant. So it's not too painful. But I'm just going to leave that there. I, I hope it's going to grow back. But I'm not holding my breath. That means I don't have hope for it. If it dies, it dies. This is a dead Ionium Lindley. I took some cuttings before and I just left it here. So in the bottom, they're okay. Look, the roots are growing. So if I plant this in the soil and take this inside next to a window, that will grow. But if left here, that's what's going to happen. The frost will get to them. And the wind is picking up again. Oh my goodness. Wet, cold and windy. Uh, that is how I describe our weather here in Canberra lately used to be beautiful when we used to have drought it was <laughs> the winter was beautiful because we're always forsaking we're somewhere warm but this year and the previous year <laughs> hang on I'll get this one too it's been terrible because we're here we're not forsaking we normally go away during winter looking for gold and gemstones we travel uh, to the warmer parts of Australia but 
this couple last couple of years we just been stuck at home because hubby's condition he is uh, medically challenged at the moment but anyway I know I'm sure he's gonna get over it but anyway this one as well I just put it here and I hope I don't forget I have to remove all those bottom leaves again and now I'm gonna take you outside Oh, I forgot to show you this one. My super bum again this year. Look, <laughs> my mother plant is suffering again. I kept forgetting. And then I thought it'll be frost hardy on this spot. No such luck because of the rain and the frost together. So I think I better bring that inside as well. So now I think I'm going to start growing a lot of the plants that are not frost hardy. I'm going to grow them inside. Alice Evans has weathered the frost and the wet and the cold and the wind and there's a couple of leaves damaged but the rest of it is okay. Grab the very pearl bean. Look how delicious this is. You could almost put it in I well I could put it in my tarot drink. <laughs> beautiful, isn't it? Look at the colors. Just gorgeous. And if it's not colored up, it's still beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous. And I'm surprised that it's really, really frost hardy as well. So I'm gonna have to grow a lot more of these ones. Look, nice and chubby and strong actually feels hard and chunky and they call me ratta -ta -tam -tam. I hate this plant <laughs> because there is ratam there's latam there's bloody ratam and then there's ratam there's colored ones and there's lighter ones so I think this one is the lighter one it looks more like white champagne to me so anywho I am not impressed with this specific one because I have some colored ratam and this one is just not coloring up to my standard. So this is another ratam that's about to color up but now it's starting to rot up as well so I'm gonna have to fix that. I'll put you here. I'll get back to you later on. That's an empty pot. And this is also another ratam. So this is the reason now why I should really stop buying succulents. Because of the weather. I have enough anyway. So I should really stop. But it's an addiction. Oh sorry it's about to fall. It's an addiction and I can't help it. So I'm trying to not smoke. Although I will never go back into smoking. But sometimes I do feel like I want to smoke. Because of the frustration I feel with these succulents. Well it's actually not the succulents fault. It's the weather. So maybe I should really get a greenhouse. But then that's work. Because I grow succulents mainly to put in my garden. Not to dote on. I want to be able to just plant them and then forget about them see them every now and then and say hello but the rest of the time I just want them to do their own thing and I don't have to look after them so apart from cleaning up like this one I haven't cleaned that up I haven't seen you for a long time this violet queen that's been covered with dry leaves because it hasn't been watered now it's got too much water so really heavy and now I have to clean that up. Oh, one plant I want to show you. We're going to get to the front later on. But anyway, this is orange sherbet. Half of it are coloring up in the center. And a couple of leaves got hit by the frost. And the rest of it is looking like an opalina, but not quite. Some of them that colors up, I will grow. And then the other ones that doesn't color up, maybe I will just feed them to the birds <laughs> no the birds have been actually eating my plants but anyway oh you ah beautiful so this is I, I can't remember now whether yes copper canyon I still can make out the name there so copper canyon this is the common plants that are so frost hardy this is the plant that you plant them in this is actually about five six years old now when I first got my first copper canyon it was like a cluster of about three or four and then now they're everywhere I don't even know where the other ones there's some in the garden but this pot here had been just like that every now and then maybe I've cleaned it twice in that five years but it basically look after itself in summer it's boring but in winter it is beautiful this is another Jocelyn Ainsworth hybrid that has been called Pachyveria or Graptoveria rough 
so it's not the rough it's Ruth is the right name and this is another plant that you can just grow and forget and it will look after itself Echeveria red sail look how big they are well big for our area here it got semi hit by the frost but it has survived many 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 frosts this is one of the freelies I got when I first started growing succulents it was a in a small pot for $5.99 and look at them three I haven't really propagated them because I have been just more concerned of trying to make them survive winter and that one there in the center is another cup three but this is sort of in a more like protected area because I have 50% UV shade cloth area plus if you have, you've got this area sort of protecting them and you've got this little bushy <laughs> potinia tree hill that I've been cutting so look I've been chopping it down so it can't grow I'm trying to bonsify it but I'm growing this just to serve as a protection for the succulents that I've grown in this area so when you're growing succulents you really have to create a microclimate for your succulents so they can survive the weather if I live in Sydney I don't even have to bother with all of this because uh, they can survive I'll just put um, a 50% UV shade cloth area for the new ones and the old plants that can grow out in the sun and maybe if there's forecast of frost just put some frost cloth over it at those times that they're gonna have frost but the rest of the time I'm sure I'm gonna have less maintenance especially if they're planted in the garden they are much hardier than being grown in pots Another interesting fact for those who grow carnivorous plants. So my carnivorous plants are all thriving in here, even the uh, pingu something. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, there's even snail, never, never mind. Fly and wasp eaters. So Saracenia species. Now these ones have been doing marvelously in here. And then when I remember, I give them a bit more water but at the moment, because we've been having so much rain, they're doing fine. They're still alive. So I'm thinking of creating a little pond for my carnivorous plants here uh, when the weather warms up a bit. But look, afterglow is dead again. It's after death now again. <laughs> so never mind. A lot of succulents I have to give up on growing because it's just a struggle. There's no point making a garden and then you have to redo your garden every year because they die but never mind sorry after glow after this winter no more I am not gonna keep you anymore I'm just gonna keep these hardy ones like this Brachiosum here so Pachypaitum Brachiosum they're far more better being grown in here than the afterglow this fire pit look look at the water so I drilled holes in it, but obviously it's not enough. So now I actually have to remove a couple of the plants that was in there and on the other side there because they started rotting. See, look at all this rognoni eye here, which I think is mislabeled. That's not rognoni eye. I think it's more of an elegance hybrid and they have rotted. Look at that. When they rot and they die, <laughs> and we have to move them out. But anyway, this alabaster magic doesn't mind the wet. Look at it. Have you got damage? I can't believe that. That you are still, yeah, alabaster magic. You're still alive. And also this moon godness here, I have to remove that because that's going to rot. And the caspidata jelly jam Saragossa here. I already removed the other one here, but that one is okay. And Pollux. Pollux has to uh, be cleaned up and all this area, I really need to drill more holes. And anyway guys, that's all I've got for this video. And I'm just gonna uh, inspect my... Oh! Sorry, sedum clavatum. I'm sorry. See, they're not frost hardy. It takes a long time before you could expose them to the sun. I mean, to the element, to the frost really. The sun they love, but the frost they don't. And also, that crassula, 
Mumji, Mumji something. <laughs> it was beautiful, but now I even put it there just so it can have a bit of protection. This is the reason why I don't grow a lot of casulas. For those people who always says you only feature Echeverias and Graptovarias, all the freely ones, it's because these are the ones that can survive my area or the weather that where I live in because we get frost. So otherwise, even the Kante, so that Kante normally would be beautiful by now, but it keeps getting hammered by the frost, of course, it's gonna die and then come back, die, come back, but the um, Monroe, look how beautiful that is. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for this video. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go inside because I'm freezing. Oh yes, by the, by the way, I just started growing this yam, this red oka, look. I'm just waiting for that to grow because I want to know what it tastes like. I want to know what it tastes like. Okay. <laughs> so this is the plants that I pulled up the other day or pulled out from that pot. And hopefully I can revive them. But if not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they grow so easily. Even just one plant. One plant. Look. That. I forgot what your name is now. But anyway... Hopefully you enjoy this video and I'll see you on the next video going inside Okay, this one. Oh, I can't. Oh, yes, it breaks off I'm probably best leaving that to protect it From the frost, but doesn't matter. So good